Audio Sound. This is Bjorn Jacobson speaking, and this is a video series about how to do AAA sized projects in WISE. Welcome back to another AAA Y series. Today we are trying to take a look at some footsteps, how we can simply use the material switches that we have and how we can use the wetness parameter to create a nice sounding footstep that will blend over depending on how wet the ground is and so on. This video series is about how to create a sort of like fake WISE AAA project, but the size of a AAA project, how we can use color coding and other things, how to make it life easier for us. This is the first video where we're actually going to be using an actual sound, so it'll be interesting. One of the reasons why we're creating this is that we're trying to imagine that we have a AAA project that doesn't exist. Or even if it did exist, we are at a point in production where the stuff that we are creating cannot go into the game yet. So we're trying to be one step ahead of the pack, create systems and wise, and we know that if it's triggered correctly, once the game is ready, it should work out of the box, theoretically. So let's get to it. Over here in our ground material switch, we have a bunch of these, but we will be creating more. So we have dirt forest and flowers and so on. So let's create one more here. It's called flowers and we have forest. We also need forest pine because there can be a difference between these forests. We have grass and we will have one called ice. We will have one called leaves, marsh, puddle, dirt, puddle, grass, rock, sand, snow, stone, stone floor, swamp. Piles, water, water, color, water, wave. You have wood, you have wood, wood, you have wood, four. Now, now that we have all of these, let's try and go over here under our and under our player footsteps and try to create some of these. Over here we have these that we're going to get rid of because we are now going to create the switch that are going to be using these. So we will create a switch that we will name accordingly to our naming convention. So we will have player footsteps and I prefer to have these also named as what switch are they actually doing so especially if you have a longer stretch of, of switch containers like switch containers and switches you tell it what your switch is from and to or similar so in our case this is a material switch in that way we know what we then need is that we need something to decipher from our ground wetness so let's just start by the first one and call it dirt so a switch container that we will call dirt wetness switch. In that way, we know that this is the answer to the first switch, and we know that this is a switch that de determines wetness. And of course, this one here, because there is nothing in it yet, shall be marked as red. Now, we will go ahead and create all these, but one of the things that I prefer to do very first is to simply say that we are going to call this here a wetness template because the reason why we're going to create a template is that we want to make one that is set up accordingly with the correct containers and everything so that once we have this one ready we can just copy it rename it and it'll work so in our wetness template we will have as we saw before we will have ground wetness material which will be dry damp soaked and wet so we will have here one that is called damp Dry, soaked, and wet. In our wetness template over here, we are going to be assigning the ground wetness switch and simply drag these over because in that way, they will always be there whenever we copy this template over. This means that we have our ground wetness switch assigned here. And of course we should set a default. Our default should probably be dry. You can use whatever you want, but just make sure that it uses the one that is probably the most in the game. So now we have our wetness template. We can now copy this and now say that this is dirt wetness switch, right? And then we need one for all of the rest of them. Now I'll go ahead and create all the rest of these just real quick and you'll see. And that way we can copy all this, simply rename this and call it dirt, rename this and call it flowers. So now we have a switch container for each and every material that we have over here. So we're just gonna be selecting them all instead of our wetness template, hit control F2, which is group renaming. 
And you notice how they all have this number here by the end of their name because we duplicated them all. And since we know that this is always the last three letters or values in this, then we can always just say remove. You hit this one here and say we want to remove three and we want it to do from the end. So what you'll see here is that this is the original name that it has right now. And these are all the names that it will have afterwards. So now we have these. So don't be afraid to copy paste all these things. You can always mass remove these. If there was a system where we could simply say fit to all materials, it would be perfect. So down here in your right corner is a rename all. There we go. Now all these are all renamed and all named correctly. What we're going to do is that we are going to into our material switch. We will then pick that this is our ground material switch. Default, let's put it to dirt. Now it's just drag and drop all these over here. And remember, these occur in the order they are created. They don't occur in any kind of naming space. So if you name them correctly after you have created all these, they will be in the same order, which is really nice. Right, so now they're all assigned. And as you can see, they're all marked as red. What we have here is that we should go to our events and say, play player footsteps. What should it be playing? It should be playing this material switch here. So if we hit space, you know, nothing happens because there is nothing in there. What we should now start by doing is to drag our materials and samples into this. And so we can start. Let's just start by with dirt and you'll see the example. So I have a bunch of files here. Now, again, have in mind that this is not about how to create assets. This is about how to use the assets and why. So how you're going to make your footsteps. That's your thing. There's plenty of other tutorials about how to do that. I have a bunch of samples here and I'll show you drag and drop them into our material switch. We'll just copy them over. But what you really should do is to now that we have a test files originals folder, you should create a folder here that we will simply call locomotion. If you're really strict about this, you should actually go in here and have a folder for each material if you want to just to keep a very tight structure in your originals folder, because in that way you can always backtrack what sound is being wrong. And then you will never have a naming convention problem if two files are named the same thing accidentally located in, the, in two different folders. And in this case, I only have for regular dirt, semi wet and soaked. So we will be using, let's say, regular dirt here. We have various examples. We will use that for dry. We will also be using that for damp, then we will be using semi wet for damp. So now a folder might look like this. All of these random containers have what they need. And if we press play, what we want is that our ground wetness switch to determine which one to play. So we will go down here and say it's currently at zero. So now it's playing dry. Let's go over to our game sinks and take a look at that RTPC. You see, this is the value here. So here it sounds a little bit more wet and here it's a little more dry. What we actually then want is that this RTPC here, use this game parameter here, should probably have some sort of slew rate. And since it goes between zero and one, we can just say 0 0.5, which means that it'll take two seconds to get to anything. In that case, that we can then go here, test this out. We're now dry. And if we change this here to fully wet, It doesn't go fully wet instantly. It takes like just a couple of steps before it gets there. In that way, you can sort of like also have, especially when you're coming out of wet. What we can do is that we can go over here and say, maybe it should only be 0.1. In that way, we can say, I suggest setting it maybe to 0.3 because in that way it'll be, this is fully wet. 
And once we go to dry land, it sort of fades through from soaked to wet to damp to dry over a couple of steps. You can experiment with this and then you will have it. What we're going to do now that now that we have dirt playing fully and we have everything in it that we want, then mark this one as green because that one is ready. And that way we can go through this hierarchy here and easily say, <clears throat> oh, we have flowers, we have something else. Let's try and add another one and I'll show you what it sounds like when we're changing these. We're gonna be adding the forest one and in the forest one, there's actually something interesting going on that I'll show you. So let's under forest, add all these. Remember, this has to go to locomotion and forest. Good. So under forest, we have forest dry, which will go to dry. We'll sound like this, which is radic dramatically different from the dirt one. We have semi wet, which is what we would call the damp one, perhaps. We should be calling it damp though. Now we have all our materials spread out. This is dry. This is damp wet and so we also have this sweetener here so what we're going to do is that we're going to mark all these and say alt shift r to create a parent random container we will be calling this here dry sweetener the easiest thing about this is how to add this really quick is to go up to our switch container here and say that whenever it's playing dry, we will also be playing the dry sweetener. So up here, let's say it should be playing dry. If we under dry mute this one, you can hear this detail playing. And that way we have two variations playing. So this is constantly triggering and it'll trigger really nicely and make the forest sound more like random you're trip stepping on small twigs and so on so once because we've already set the ground wetness and the slew rate that we decided so this is how it's going to be and if we suddenly step on dirt then we can already play up here. Actually, we should go to the event. Let's say over here, trigger this event. RTPCs goes. Now we're on dry dirt. Under switches, we can just set it to forest. Now it plays forest, which means that this switch works, this footstep event works. So in case that we have our game suddenly set up that can trigger footsteps. You can just tell your programmer, your animator, or do it yourself, add this one event to wherever it is, and it'll easily work. And that's how ground wetness and just knowing the material type can become crucial and you can already have this set up. Now remember to use your color coding. So this one here goes green, which means we now know that we need to do the rest of all these. Thank you for watching this Kujo Sound video on how to do AAA size projects and whys. If you like this video, why not hit the thumbs up or maybe even subscribe to the channel. If you want to support the channel and all the time that I take off to create all this content, consider heading over to patreon.com forward slash Sound, where you for as little as $1 a month can help me sustain this channel. I would really, really appreciate it. Hopefully I'll see you again in another video or check out some of the other videos on the channel. It's a lot of game audio stuff. Once again, thanks for watching. See you next time.